Now, the next company is called ResearchGate, which is one of those companies we have tried to get to know for many, many years because they're operating in a sector where my old life was. At Lehman Brothers, I was covering professional publishers and I did a lot of work with scientific medical journal publishers. Um, Ijat, please come on stage. Finally, somebody coolly dressed. Nice seeing you, thank you. Where? Wherever you want, maybe here is better. Sit in the middle. <laughs> so for how long are you going now? How long is ResearchGate? When did you start the company? So um, it's now about 10 years. So the first two years I was still working as a medical doctor. And then after um, deciding, so I tried to get a part-time position working as an MD and uh, ResearchGate, but my professor wasn't a fan of that. He said, you know, scientists are not going to use your product, get this bird shit out of your head. Um, and focus on your academic career. And then it led to me quitting. And then I got an investment from Benchmark. And then I worked full time on it. So eight years, eight years full time. So you became a digital entrepreneur a little bit by accident. Yeah. I think you were frustrated. I read some stories. You were frustrated about how the world was structured. Yeah. And then you uh, did it yourself. And I've done a lot of deals in the SDM industry, and there's this funny story because Reed Elsevier, the gorilla uh, of the industry, maybe the, the Google of signed SDM, they have like, I think, 1,700 journals, they're like 60,000 journals, and they have been constantly increasing the prices and the libraries, which are often, yeah, not, most of them actually non profit, they had issues increasing uh, or keeping in, in, in line with the, with the price rise because their budgets were usually flat. So what happened, they had to cancel the cheaper <laughs> independent long tail journals to continue the must read. And I guess it's there's their, their rankings by city stations to see mm -hmm. which journal is more important than the others. And they were completely frustrated. So they came up with the idea, let's boycott, the share price will come down and then we will. So how is it operating in an academic, non-profit world, trying to run a profitable business? You're monetizing how at the moment? Because it's like a peer-to-peer, scientist-to-scientist research platform. They upload their articles. Um, how do you monetize, if you monetize at all? Yeah, so first of all, it's not uh, solely about the articles at ResearchGate. It's more about the interactions uh, among scientists. So back to my story as a scientist, um, when I was a scientist, um, you publish usually only positive data. You don't talk about failed experiments. And that is a huge problem in our world that we as scientists don't talk about failed experiments. So that was the initial idea why we started ResearchGate. And how do we monetize that? So over the last decade, we have grown to the largest website in science. Um, if you look, into Alexa, for example, we are now, it's like one and a half billion websites in the world. We're now the 119th biggest website in traffic in the world with a science website, bigger than New York Times, bigger than Alibaba. How many monthly users do you have? 150 million visits, um, around 80 million uniques, um, and close to a billion page views per month. Um, and how do we monetize it? So back to the question, yeah. I just want to give some, some context. Yeah, that's very um, good. So first of all, we have all the scientists in the world using our product. Um, which, of course, if you can you know, use that, you think about that, it would be pretty logic to build recruiting product, which we did. So we have a recruiting product where, for example, Harvard, NASA, or other uh, research institutions can come to ResearchGate and say, we're looking for these scientists with those set of skills, and please help us to find these people. And they pay for that. So you are the real oracle of our world. You're <laughs> connecting the research people. Yes. Because when they publish their failures, somebody else who would do the same test, can learn. could check before, yes. and mankind, society can develop faster. Yes. How much help you get from the governments? Because what you do, I see like really one of the most important uh, functions in society. Are you getting help from them or they are protecting their publishing houses? So no, honestly, we have been from the beginning, the whole product was built bottom up. And that was also the secret of the success. If you just compare the first five years of ResearchGate, there were two and a half million um, research artifacts, which is publications, data sets, conference papers, 
were uploaded into our system, and now every three weeks, two and a half million are being uploaded. So you can see that the number of the data which is being uploaded into our system is increasing significantly um, and, and exponentially. And this is because we did it bottom up and not we did not try to get help from governments or whatever. But Same here, I, by the way. Which is good. <laughs> I think it slows you down. Um, at one point, of course, you have to talk to governments because you know we are by far the largest, let's call it, database or network with a database character um, of scientific information in the world. So we know what's happening in science right now. And I think this is also um, something we have, to care, we have to be careful with. And this is um, always with these big businesses. There is coming a lot of responsibility with it. Is recruiting a monetization option? There's like a company in England, which is for teachers, the recruitment platform, became a very large business. Providence recently bought it. It's called TESS. Is there a recruitment product on, on ResearchGate? Yes. So we have another uh, revenue stream, which is advertisement. Um, but it focuses um, very hard on, on products, scientific products, like microscopes, DNA sequencing kits. All the stuff around the sector, it, I guess. Exactly, around the sector and also software, everything you need to do research. And this um, we connect very in a very smart way with the content on ResearchGate. And this, of course, creates interactions around this content, which usually is not being anywhere uh, recorded or is not happening anywhere in the world, which is also, again, as a scientist, you need that information to know what is working, what is not working, wh what is the microscope I use, should use for my virology research. And all these questions can be answered uh, within ResearchGate in the right way. So community. it's like a, a knowledge network also for Absolutely, that. absolutely. And I think ISI, which was the Thomson-owned uh, database of checking number of references. Yeah. So academics being cited for an article or contribution, which was used as, uh, yeah, for their career, like enhancer, like the more rankings they have, the better it is. Is that some type of credibility currency on ResearchGate? Can you get as a contributor to the platform, get followers, as we know it from Facebook and Instagram, yeah, for yeah. example. Do you have this social virality built in the platform? Yes, so we have, um, so reputation in science is basically everything, it's everything right? yeah. Like you get, for reputation, they you get money. They most don't need it for money, they yeah, do exactly. it for the, for the change. Exactly, yes. And uh, the reputation also helps you to um, apply for funding and grants. So what we built, built at ResearchGate over the last couple of years are two different scores, which basically reflects the quality of the contribution and the interest in the work of scientists. So one is the RG score and one is the interest score. One is for a scientist and one is for a research piece within the scientist profile. And those two numbers give you a more complete picture in addition to all the other metrics which exist in the world. So let's talk quickly about, and I know, or well now I know, it's not just about articles. It's, it's, it's about work in progress. It's about connecting with maybe a Japanese researcher who's working on the same thing, and I find him through your platform, and we can work and collaborate together. But let's talk a little bit. There's a, there was a lot of attempts to stop ResearchGate by the big publishers and copyright uh, issues. I think you worked through all of them, right? And now you are... It's not like the open access back then, which, which had a lot of issues. You don't have any big issues on the legal side, I think, no? No, I, I would say, let's say, so we are <laughs> currently in a lawsuit with Elsevier and ACS, um, which I would call a big thing, right? Um, however, um, so first of all, we, from the first day on, it was clear for us that we don't want to be a Napster for science, right? This is not, that was not the goal of ResearchGate. So we always respected the copyrights of the copyright owners and the researchers and scientists using our product know best which articles they can upload or not. And of course- and they sometimes they don't know. Exactly, and for that, we have a, a robust system in place which follows international law, which you then, as a copyright owner, can report that these content pieces to us, and we take the content down. So I don't, you know, I feel very comfortable in the current situation, and we also know, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I play beach volleyball semi-professional, I'm a, I want to win, and I also think we will win this, and my, uh, the, one of the best general counsels in the world sits here in the audience, um, who is going to win this. Uh, well, it reminds me a little bit. You remember Mega Upload and Rapid Share? I mean, not to compare with you, but they had, of course, a lot of piracy in their yeah. servers, treasures, and they said, 
you know, it's like a deposit box at the bank. You know, there could be a head of his wife in, but at the end, yeah. I'm just the bank and I give the key for it. But yeah. So but the responsibility has to lie at the user itself. They should sue the user and not you. Which they're not going to do, of course, because those are also their customers, right? Yes. But one one more addition, which I think is important, Springer Nature, which is the is on your platform, no? is publishing is put all their content publicly available on research, ResearchGate in a pilot test. So the second largest publisher in the world is taking a different path, yes. which again shows you those are there are different interests these these players have. Some are dinosaurs which don't want to change the world because there are systems in space which you described uh, very nicely in the beginning of on this, of this talk where they have an advantage of. And of course, they don't want to change that. Why you should you change it if you're successful with that, what you do? And uh, Springer Nature understands that the future of science and the future of publishing is going to change, is changing already, and will go towards open access. And I think open access is just part of the answer. I think open science is even the next step. And the, uh, the step after is, in my opinion, automatic science. Like, how can we analyze in an automatic fashion data on a large scale in this world and make Uh, discoveries based on data which is being uploaded in the system. And I think this has to be in our interest because we are changing, uh, we're making this world a better place if we uh, empower scientists to do great discoveries. I get goosebumps. <laughs> um, we were criticizing politicians a lot here at the conference. Regulation was next to the green topic, probably the most cited uh, word at this event. Um, To what extent do politicians work with ResearchGate uh, to get help from the scientists? Are you presenting or preparing research papers together with the community? Are you, are you giving data to the press? Or how much is ResearchGate integrated in our society versus, yeah, it's actually the Facebook of the scientists and they are among themselves. It's not really getting outside. How open is it to non-scientists? So currently, all the content which is published on ResearchGate, or let's say the majority of the content, like discussions, comments, what the scientists are uploading to their profile is publicly available to everyone in the world, so everyone can read it. Uh, but if for you to sign up to the service, to become a contributor, you need an email address of an institution which we, uh, which we whitelisted. So it needs to be a research institution because we want to have um, um, funded, like great conversations on ResearchGate not being diluted by, um, by other content. But What is important is, as I said, everyone can read everything, which I think is, is important. And if we see the traffic, of course, it's not all only coming from scientists. There's a lot of traffic coming from patients, people who are interested in science. Can I check uh, climate change? Because I bet it's getting yeah, warmer and yeah, warmer. Yeah, and you can. I will get various opinions. <laughs> exactly. And I think key here at one point, Wubi, but that's a good point, is how can we somehow integrate the public into that product exactly. without diluting the core of ResearchGate? That is a problem, or let's say a challenge, which we haven't solved yet, but that is on our to-do list, to build a product for non-scientists. Well, there's always the next, no? There's always the next. We are also going for 10 years, exactly, by the yeah. way. It's our birthday event, oh, really so cool. make a present for me that you come. Thank you so much. Thank I'm really, so much. really happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.